Good afternoon. This is the voting hearing of the Licensing Board for the City of Boston. Today is Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. While the public is encouraged to attend, there will be no additional testimony accepted today. We begin with the License Premise Inspection Hearing, which occurred yesterday, Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. Item number one, Razorbacks Lessee LLC doing business as the W Boston, located at 100 Stewart Street, dated the incident August 7th, 2022. Assault and Battery Patron on Staff in Violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Thank you, Danny. Um, before I get into what how I would like to vote, I want to put on the record, in case there was any confusion, that um, this licensee did call the police. In no way was were my comments on Tuesday um, an indication that I thought they shouldn't cause, call the police in a situation like this. Um, what I was trying to get at was that I believe it was the failure of the licensee to have proper signage and proper staffing that um, resulted in them having to call the police. Um, these were two groups of people that had been spending four nights at a hotel. I think the staff response was inappropriate at the very least. I think they should have had more staff to indicate to this gentleman that he shouldn't have had his hat on. I'm not saying that his response was appropriate. I'm just saying, I believe there could have been more done to have prevented this. That being said, they were written up for assault and battery patron on staff in violation of our rules and regs. And I can't find a violation for that in particular, um, but I am gonna request from the licensee additional information about the signage, which they did provide, but I would like to know more details about the staffing in that area. Um, and what their plan is to do when the rules change at 9 p.m. Um, I was very close on this. I, I think in general, it's it was a mistake um, to not be more clear because I I kind of, I think I disagree with one thing they said that they never really had any experience in in having a friction point when enforcing a dressing dress code. And that just didn't ring true to me, but I did kind of feel the same way that I think maybe a little bit even more it, the the what happened here was really a result of what um, the patron did. I didn't see enough in if I had seen the 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 employees of the premises being aggressive towards him and some somehow amping this up, then I probably would have got over that line. So I I feel like I feel the same way, which is like they didn't do everything perfect. But I didn't think it, we got that far enough to say that they were responsible to the point of being a violation for the yeah. you know, his physical behavior. Agreed. There wasn't enough evidence um, to find a violation on the part of the um, establishment. So it sounds like the vote is for no violation. Um, Chairman Joyce, if you could just, what is it that you're requesting of the licensee? Is it correspondence for re requesting additional uh, information or? Correspondence in our file about how they deal with this change in rules at this time of night, as far as staffing and notifying patrons when things change. It was unclear to me when this person got off the elevator if he was able to see the sign or if it's just another entrance. I've been in that space. It's not necessarily, entrances and exits aren't necessarily clear. Uh, there's no real like door to go in, it's a space. Um, so I think there could be more done to um, provide patrons with um, information about changes in rules like that. Right. I think were, it was appropriate that they called the police. They had to call the police, but I don't think any, I, I think all this could have been prevented. And Did you want any details about de-escalation? Yeah, why don't we add some details about written, written details about de-escalation? Okay, so it's not, no violation, the board requests a correspondence from the licensee detailing how they will deal with the transition at 9 p.m. in terms of staffing and notifying patrons as well as a de-escalation plan. That sound correct? Sure. Yeah, especially That's patrons good. who are guests of the hotel because the, there seems to be a different entrance. Great. Thank you. Item number two has been continued to the next available hearing date. Item number three, Concord Entertainment Inc. doing business as Bill's Bar, the Lansdowne Pub, located at 9 Lansdowne Street. Dated the incident, October 1st, 2022, assault and battery in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. 
Um, I did review the videos of the situation. I did not see an assault and battery occurring. Um, I see no violation. Um, I, I saw a push on the, the angle that didn't cut out and the push happened at the moment that the other angle was cut out. So um, the, you know, the way the victim testified that she was shown a video that basically skipped over the incident, that's actually what I saw. Um, it wasn't the most violent assault that you've ever seen, but it was technically assault and battery. And I think in this instance where it seems like the management seems to have chosen to minimize and justify and endorse this behavior, I saw a violation. So I think it was like the one, as you're saying, Liam, one angle, you don't see the bottom half, but what you see is um, of the, you don't see the bottom half of the screen or, or the bodies. And so whatever he did was at the bottom half of the, um, below the, the screen, but she does turn around pretty immediately as if there was some unconsented, there was a touching by the staff that, that she did not consent to. So, yep. um, and it seemed like there was a lot of back and forth. Um, I did see how he was handling their equipment and it did seem to take the um, the the band members kind of by, um, I wouldn't say surprise, but they were concerned about it. Um, so I think they, I think there could have been something that the establishment could have done to have prevented that. Yeah, and I'm taking issue with also not just the prevention, and never mind the fact that he was an employee of theirs. So his, you know, to a certain degree, his conduct is is their conduct. But the, what, you know, it's not just the occurrence; it's the response to it. And and I do not endorse their response to this. So that's why I see a violation. Thank you. So Commissioner Curran votes for a violation. Uh, Commissioner Saxon. I mean, I think given the totality, um, I would probably lean towards uh, a violation as well. I mean, it, it especially especially given it may be correspondence that really um, lays out what is required of of, this, of an establishment when there's um, uh, an incident like that. Chairman Joyce, do you find a violation or are you still finding I'm that? still no violation, so that would be two to one. And um, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, would you like to present a... Um... Yeah, so let, let me just, this was this was assault and battery on patron, correct? It, it was uh, actually just written as assault and battery was how they were written up, but I... So she wasn't actually a patron. I think it says assault, but I wrote down in my notes, assault and battery employee on patron. Yeah, on the on our notice, it, it doesn't specify. No. Um, I might it might specify in the the original written up, but um, I mean, regardless, like it, it actually was written up. I'm reading the police report right now as a patron yeah. on patron. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that a is that a technicality or a defect? Because at least one of them wasn't a patron. Correct. That certainly makes this difficult. I'm looking right now at the- Was it noticed as a patron on patron? It, it was noticed for our hearing as just an assault and battery. The police report as written uh, is a license premise violation as a result of a patron on patron assault and battery. Well, this, this may be an issue of barring a legal defect. That sounds correct. So there are what I would say reports is, here. I would suggest a warning if 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 we can impose a warning under the circumstances. Yeah, I, I definitely have a written warning then. I I don't know what happens, <laughs> whether I can I don't know how to correct that. Does it get re-noticed or I don't know? It would then need to be reheard, I believe. Let, let's, uh, I guess we would have to look what at- What about correspondence from the board? Given the fact that we don't, unless Commissioner Card, would you still like to vote for a violation based on 
Under the facts, I saw a violation. Okay. Give a violation to... based on the facts. Yeah. Um, okay. So I would Mr. Saxon sees a violation too. Yeah. As far as penalty, what do you? I would have suggested a, a warning. Okay. Yeah, Saxon. a warning. A warning. A warning sounds warranted, definitely. So Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon, vote for find a violation, and the vote is for a warning. Yes, I just don't understand the um, the impact given the the notice the, the the type of notice that everyone received. So I don't I don't know how to reconcile that. Correct. No, figure that out. We have, we will. <laughs> Why don't we issue the warning and <laughs> take it? And we'll see. That is what we will do. Great. So a couple time. Definitely, definitely with some written correspondence that establishing why the warning has been found. Great. And a correspondence from the board. Correct. Moving on, item number four, Lisa DePrizio doing business as a pocket billiard club located at 981 Bennington Street in East Boston, dated the incident October 30th, 2022, fight on premise in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. I see no violation. I agree. I agree as well. Item number five, Guzman LLC doing business as Madalo, located at 411 Chelsea Street in East Boston, date of the incident October 23rd, 2022. A fight patron on patron outside in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A, and common vitular license not displayed properly, expired in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. This is number five. Um, Correct. The licensee did the right thing. The, the licensee separated the parties. The licensee called the police. Um, they, um, in, in my estimation, they did all the right things and I don't see a violation. The CV not being displayed had more to do with a, a COVID um, thing we gave them permission to do. So my suggestion is they just remove that. Yep, I didn't see a violation as well. I agree. Item number six, Bop Productions LLC, doing business as Bebop, located at 1116 Boylston Street. Date of the incident, December 4th, 2022. Patrons drinking alcohol on seasonal patio in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and persons under 21 in possession of alcohol in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34. Um, Commissioner Carr, why don't you start on this one? I had a no violation on the the minor possession. Um, okay. I've said this before. The I my position is that the standard is a semi, somewhat high on minors in possession. It, it's either they know or should have known, and I, I didn't think we had even had enough or should have known. Um, I could get them on the patio because they, you know, in, in, inadvertently or whatever, didn't know that they should have been monitoring the patio throughout the off season. Um, but that would just be a warning on on the patio, I guess. This okay. this was the pass off. Yes, yeah. exactly. I didn't find a violation either. I I don't think that the the um, the bartender heard any of what he was saying, and and it was just a man walking up to buy a beer. And it seemed like they were making every every effort to not serve minors and. If she had been, if she had had it for a long time and, and, and was drinking op openly and obviously, and then you can say they should have known because they knew she was underage. But I think under the circumstances with, you know, as far as the evidence we had, we, we don't have any anything like that. So I didn't quite get there with that one. Okay, I agree with you on the um, pass off. As far as the patio, I actually saw no violation. I would just ask that they remove the furniture. I think that door is open for emergency exit. Um, they should just not make it attractive to patrons sitting out there. That, can, that sounds fine. I, I didn't have strong feelings about it. I can agree with you, Kathleen. So the vote is for no violation on both counts? Yes. Yeah. Item number seven, Newa Liquors, Inc. doing business as Walsh Wine and Spirits, located at 388 Washington Street in Brighton, dated the incident December 20th, 2022. Service of alcohol to persons under 21 years of age in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34 to 34A, Section 41, and Section 64 to 64A. I see a violation. 
I did as well. I can agree. Yep. Danny, the history? I pull that up right now. I actually don't believe they have any history. There, it, this, uh, this license was transferred to the current owner in 2020, and there was no history since then. Vote for a written warning. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sure. Item number eight, licensee failed to appear. We have since heard from the licensee's attorney, so we will be reaching out to them. Item number nine, Witchcraft LLC, doing business as New England Wicked Craft Company, located at 54 Salem Street, date of the incident, December 30th, 2022. Overcrowding, 63 mechanical count, 49 capacity, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.03J and 1.06A and F. In my opinion, this was more a um, question, a more a um, lack of training and awareness of um, the capacity at this place. There was new door staff. They have since trained them. They have put uh, measures that I feel are appropriate to prevent this in the future. So I see no violation. Uh, I can endorse all that. Can we do some written correspondence just to yes. kind of document that something had happened, but we're not finding it to the level of a violation. Yes, I agree. So no, no violation with correspondence from the board. Mm -hmm. Including, um, you know, people waiting for tables being inside and kind of, you know, in, in those small buildings in the north end there, they might want to ask people to, you know, take a, take a walk for five or 10 minutes while their table's clearing. Right. Get their cell phone number or something. Yep. We've had similar kind of fact patterns in the in the north end with those small restaurants. So, right. Item number ten: James Associates Inc. doing business as the Broadway, located at seven thirty four East Broadway in South Boston. Date of the incident: December thirty first, twenty twenty two. Overcrowding: four hundred seventy two mechanical count capacity four sixteen in violation of Mass General Laws Chapter one thirty eight Section sixty four and Boards Rule one point oh three J and one point oh six A and F. To me, this is a violation. Um, although the overcapacity was not huge, this was New Year's Eve. They should have been prepared for this. Um, so I see a violation. I did as well. I agree. They have some history, but it was it was some time ago. Yeah, I'm looking right now. There was a warning for an overcrowding uh, last June. Second warning. Are you comfortable with that, Commissioner, or I'll defer to your view? I, I think it was far enough ago. When I first saw it, it seemed remote enough to for a second warning. Okay. So the vote is a violation with the second warning? Yes. And item number 11, Inshallah Inc. doing business as Crave, located at 128 Brighton Ave in Alston, date of the incident January 8th, 2023. Premise providing bottle service to patrons without authorization in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. I see a violation. <laughs> um, did, did we have evidence of them providing bottle service or just advertising? it? I thought that was the uh, detective. Yeah, they went in there. They so, went in there and they saw it, right? Yeah, did we have bottles on the tables? Full of liquor? I don't know, Commissioner. Let me rewind my brain. Um, I don't think we did. I think it, the issue was that they had the, the flyers and, you know, they, but, you know, did, did we have any pictures, a testimony that there was liquor out and people were serving themselves or that someone was serving them at, at the table? I came away with that understanding and that she didn't I, deny it. I, I think because she had been doing it before, we've already found her in violation. Right. But I think her point was that it was just the old menus from the time that they were doing it. Can I propose we defer our vote on this one? Because I yeah, I would literally have yeah. to hear that testimony again. Because I, I came away with the understanding that that's that was the whole reason. Yeah, I, I mean, it's something had to tip um, Detective Hernandez to even check the menus, right? Like certainly. Yeah. Um, 
But I think that could be a remnant of that. We know that they were doing it before. We found them in violation not that long ago. Right. Um, and I think that maybe we just still have them advertising it online. And But when they actually went in, I didn't hear any testimony that there was liquor out. All right, we will go back. I will review the video and the testimony we have, the video from the hearing and the testimony we have. Um, and we'll defer this to our next voting hearing. Okay. In the I'll, meantime, I'll I will ask that people, we don't consider their application for bottle service in the interim. Yeah, we, we yeah, should that's, be clear that's violations they've had recently. Actually, yeah, I'm looking. Looks like we do have photographs, um, but we'll have to go back. Yeah, from this like, one? Those are photographs from in this report? Um, I'm looking. There are three oh, yeah. photographs attached to this report. A okay. yeah, employee walking through the bar with bottles in her hand, yeah. like dancing. OK. We, why don't we defer? Because the picture's not that clear. Yeah, the serious violation with a lot on the line. So why don't we defer? Yeah, because okay, that's why I pre presented as a question because it, it seemed like the main thrust of it was this menu that was there, and they were trying to inspect it, and apparently they were trying to hide it from them uh, and all that. But I was trying uh, not to drill down too deeply on this one. Yeah, this yeah, for us several times on the same thing. So. And there was no opposition on her part, but I would like to have all the facts before we have our debate. Okay. So, sorry Next about week. that. It may, it's probably me that didn't quite. No, it's fine. So yeah, the board will defer disposition of this incident and will not entertain an application for bottle service in the interim. Yeah, we'll hit pause on that. Okay. Great. Moving and on to the transaction hearing. Giving me that information in the middle of the hearing. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to transactional hearing, which occurred this morning, Wednesday, March 8th, 2023, item number one, 735 Morrissey Boulevard, Inc., doing business as Puritan Restaurant, located at 735 William T. Morrissey Boulevard in Dorchester, as petitioned to him in the closing hour of the business to 2 a.m. And Chairman Joyce was not present for uh, oh, that hearing. Yeah, I vote to approve. I agree. Item number two, Boylston FAB LLC doing business as Finagle Bagel, located at 535 Boylston Street, has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business to kitchen storage and bagel dough mixing and basement, food service on the main floor with seating and dining room on the second floor, 58 seats, seasonal patio March to November on private property with 24 seats, patio hours the same as the restaurant. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number three, Cafe Dello Sport, Inc., doing business as Cafe Dello Sport, located at 308 Hanover Street, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business to Myvin Spencer. Um, I vote to approve Ms. Spencer as manager of record, Mr. Spencer as manager of record at this location. I believe he has the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number four has been withdrawn by the applicant. Item number five, Boston Hospital. Items five and six, Boston Hospitality Partners LLC, doing business as the club and the connector in the collective, located at 115 Federal Street, has petitioned for the approval of a management agreement with JFR Boston MP LLC. Um, I vote to approve. Um, I vote to approve. Sorry. I agree. I agree. I agree as well. Right, and this is for both items five and six. Item number seven, Italy Boston LLC, doing business as Italy, located at 800 Boylston Street, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers, has petitioned for a change in ownership interest, and has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business to Christian Mutino. I vote to approve the changes that are requested, and the manager of record, I believe, Mr. Mutino, has the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number eight, Cantina LLC doing business as Cantina located at 800 Boylston Street has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager and has petitioned for a change of ownership interest. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number nine, California Pizza Kitchen Inc doing business as California Pizza Kitchen located at 800 Boylston Street 
has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers, and has petitioned for a change in stock interest. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 10, Locali Inc. doing business as Locali, located at 350 to 352 Hanover Street, has petitioned to change the category of the licensed business to a common vigil or seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license. I vote to approve this requested change. I believe they demonstrated public need um, for this. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 11, Via Canucha LLC, doing business as Via Canucha, located at 1739 Dorchester Ave in Dorchester, has petitioned to change the category of the licensed business to a common vigil or seven-day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license. Um, I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 12, Lamani Seaport Boston LLC, doing business as Lamani Grill, located at 100 Northern Ave has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business to 6,401 square feet on ground floor with main dining room, bar area seating, and two private dining rooms, kitchen storage and office in rear, additional storage in basement, two main entrances through lobby of building and front vestibule, four exits, 550 square feet seasonal outdoor patio, April to October on private property, closing hour 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 13, Delta Airlines Inc. doing business as Delta Sky Club Express, located at Logan Airport Terminal E in East Boston, has petitioned to change the location of the licensed business to Logan Airport Terminal E club level in East Boston. I vote to approve. I do as well. I agree as well. Item number 14, the May May Restaurant Inc. doing business as May May, located at 506 Park Drive, has petitioned to change the location of the licensed business to 58 Old Colony Avenue. And secondly, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business to Alyssa Lee. I vote to approve Ms. Lee as the manager of record. I believe she is the appropriate character and fitness to serve, and I approve the other requested changes. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 15, Vesper LLC doing business as Plant Pub Fenway located at 61 Brookline Ave has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to 61 Brookline Restaurant LLC doing business as Loco Taqueria and Oyster Bar at the same location, Michael Paul Shaw Manager, 1 a.m. closing hour, and has petitioned to pledge the license to Vesper LLC. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 16 at Nosmata Inc. doing business as Shenanigans, located at 332 West Broadway in South Boston, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Magnificent 7 Inc. doing business as The Keys at the same location. Seth Delury Manager, 1 a.m. closing hour, has petitioned to update the description of the premise to a 4,880 square foot restaurant with seating for 114, bar, two restrooms and kitchen on ground floor level, basement has an office, liquor room, keg room, and miscellaneous storage. And finally, has petitioned to pledge the license to Nosmata Inc. I vote to approve um, the transfer and to approve Mr. Delory as manager of record. I do as well. I agree. Item number 17, Theater License Holding LLC, located at zero block C, Seaport Square, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Grace by Nia Seaport LLC, doing business as Grace by Nia at the same location, Nia Grace Manager, 2 a.m. closing hour. It has also petitioned to amend the description of the premise to, one second, it's a very lengthy description, 7,178 square feet on level three and 3.5 of a mixed use building, Main entrance exit located on level three, accessible via escalator and elevator, 5,269 square feet on level three with two configurations. Restaurant configuration, bar with seating for 21 patrons, drink rail with seat for nine patrons, bar dining with seating for 24 patrons, front dining with seating for 43 patrons, raised bar dining with seating for 22 patrons, music dining with seating for 47 patrons, total restaurant configuration seating 166. Nightclub configuration, bar with seating for 15 patrons, drink rail with seating for nine patrons, Bar dining with seating for 24 patrons, front dining with seating for 43 patrons, raised bar dining standing for 49 patrons, music dining standing for 118 patrons, total nine club configuration seating 103, kitchen storage and back of house to front right of premise, additional storage and back of house located on level 3.5, approximately 1,909 square feet with no public access to level 3.5, closing hour 2 a.m. And finally, has petitioned to pledge the license to Seaport BC Retail Owner LLC. 
Thank you. Um, we've already approved Nia Grace as manager, and I approve the other changes requested in the um, transfer. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 18, Buccino Investments, LLC, doing business as Good Life, located at 28 to 30 Kingston Street, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Upper Spectacle, LLC, doing business as Hook and Line, located at 10 Fan Pier Boulevard. Um, Thomas oh. schlesinger Gudeli, manager, closing hour 2 a.m., and has petitioned to pledge the license to Cambridge Savings Bank. I vote to approve Mr. schlesinger Guadelli as manager of record. I approve the transfer and the pledge and the other changes requested. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 19, SOC Noodles, Inc., doing business as South of Clouds, located at 412A Market Street in Brighton has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to the Neiman Marcus Group, LLC, doing business as Neiman Marcus, located at 5 Copley Place, closing hour 11 p.m., Joseph Flanagan, manager. Um, I vote to approve Mr. Flanagan as manager of record, and I vote to approve uh, the transfer and the other changes requested. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 20, Tory Ray Crowell, doing business as Volinole, located at 351 Hanover Street, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Cannonball Cafe, LLC, doing business as Cannonball Cafe, located at 383 Dorchester Ave. I have Rachel Lazar, manager, closing hour 10 p.m., and has petitioned to pledge the license to Core Investments, Inc. Um, I vote to approve um, this transfer. And the changes requested, I also vote to approve Ms. Lazar as manager of record. I believe she is the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number 21, Lipola Po Farm LLC, doing business as Crane River Cheese Club, located at 138 Cambridge Street, has applied for a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. Manager Nicholas Giannotti, closing time 12 a.m. I vote to approve um, this application and to approve Mr. Giannotti as manager of record. I do as well. I agree. Item number 22, Boba Me, doing business as Boba Me, located at 1520 Tremont Street in Mission Hill, has applied for a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. Manager Thomas Pham, closing time 12 a.m. I vote to approve this application pending the availability for a license for which they qualify. I agree. I agree as well. And item number 23, FT Delmar Boston LLC doing business as Delmar located at 1 Congress Street has applied for a common or seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. James Robertson, Jr. Manager, closing time 2 a.m. I vote to approve this application pending the availability of a license for which they qualify. I agree. I agree as well. Moving on to non-hearing transactions. The following are applying for a new common victuals license at a previously licensed location. Item number one, El Oriental de Cuba, Inc. doing business as El Oriental de Cuba. Located at 416 Center Street in Jamaica Plain. Kimberly Pina, manager of record, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number two, DJ Brothers LLC doing business as to do Rico Fast Food located at 50 Maverick Square in East Boston. Diego Preciado, manager of record, hours of operation 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number three, Say Weekend LLC doing business as Say Weekend located at 99 Summer Street. Uh, Song Koo Kim, manager of record, hours of operation, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number four, Cava Meze Grill, LLC, doing business as Cava, located at 125 Summer Street. Patrick Cartier, manager of record, hours of operation, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number five, 53 Bailey LLC, doing business as Bailey and Sage, located at 53 State Street. Michael Kaplan, manager of record, hours of operation, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. 
I agree as well. I have number six, Nubian Markets, LLC, doing business as Nubian Markets, located at 2565 Washington Street in Roxbury. Yusuf Yassin, manager of record, hours of operation 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Following is applying for a new lodging house at a previously licensed location. Oasis Guest House, Inc., located at 20 to 22 Edgerly Street. Richard Swanson, manager of record. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. The following is applying for a new in-holder license at a previously licensed location. Adams Bed and Breakfast, Inc., located at 12 to 14 Edgerly Street. Richard Swanson, manager of record. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Following is applying for changes to an existing in-holder license. BRE Quad MA owner, LLC, doing business as Club Quarters Boston, located at 161 Devonshire Street, has applied to change the officer and manager to Christopher Elise, and has applied to change the corporate officer and vice president to Michael Procaccio. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Following have applied for one day amendments to their existing license. Item number one, the Polish American Citizens Club of South Boston, Inc., located at 82 Boston Street in Dorchester, has applied for a one day amendment to allow the sale of alcohol outside on the contiguous dead end on Power Street on May 21st, 2023, between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number two, the Charles River Speedway, doing business as the Charles River Speedway at 1420 to 1440 Soldiers Field Road in Brighton, has applied for a one-day amendment to include the courtyard for the St. Patrick's Day Speedway crawl on March 16th between 5 and 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number three, the Charles River Speedway, located at 1420 to 1440 Soldiers Field Road in Brighton, has applied for a one-day amendment to include a bar in Garage B for a vendor market on March 23rd and April 21st from 5 to 9.30 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. Item number four, the Notch Brighton Tap Room LLC at 521 Western Ave in Brighton, has applied for a one-day amendment to include uh, their license to cover Garage B. Designation between this extension and the existing license at the Charles River Speedway will be manned uh, for a St. Patrick's Day event on March 16th from 5 to 10 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree as well. I agree. Similarly, item number five, the Notch Brighton Tap Room LLC at 525 Western Ave has applied for a one-day amendment to include extending their license down to cover garage B. Designation will be manned between uh, this extension and the existing license at the Charles River Speedway. And this is for a comedy show on March 17th from 8 to 10 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. And item number six, the Notch Brewery at 525 Western Ave in Brighton has applied for a one-day amendment to include the gravel beer garden to a paved area and stage directly adjacent uh, and will be demarcated between it and other adjacent licensees. This is on March 18th from 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree as well. The board has before them a series of special one-day alcohol applications, which have been administratively reviewed by staff and approved by the board. And we have one item on old and new business to vote on. The board is in receipt of correspondence from GBLL Holdings MALLC, doing business as GoPuff, located at 371 Dorchester Ave in South Boston, requesting administrative approval to amend the description of the license from a 7,704 square foot retail package store on the first floor with storage office and restroom to a 7,704 square foot retail package store on the first floor with storage office and restrooms. There are no changes to the sale, storage, uh, or description or square footage. Um, this is the addition of one restroom. Um, I vote to approve. It's just one bathroom to two bathrooms, right? Correct. Yeah. I agree. I agree as well. Thank you. These are all the items before the board today, and that will adjourn this afternoon's voting hearing. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Danny, I actually have one question. Sure. Does it have, and it doesn't have to be on the record. It oh, doesn't have to yep. be.